On the 21st of May, 2005, my daughter Carolyn, age 13, left for a fun day with friends. I didn't see her again until 10 p.m. in the morgue. A whole lot of circumstances led to a fatal accident. A change to any one of which could have delivered a different outcome. She ended up on a friend's horse at a camp draft. No, she wasn't wearing a helmet. The horse reared and ran off with her. She impacted under the rear of her small car. She had massive head injuries and died instantly. On Mother's Day in 2001, my brother John was skateboarding home from a day at the beach. John rode his skateboard daily and was easily convinced that helmet wearing for daily rides was not necessary. As he crossed the street 30 feet from his place of residence, he was struck by a car. The impact of the car broke his leg in several places as well as some of his ribs. While these injuries can heal, the trauma he sustained to his head could not. As my brother died in my arms in the emergency room, Doc told me that his death could have been easily prevented by wearing a helmet. Three days before my dad's 51st birthday, he was flying downhill and almost got hit by a car but swerved to miss and flew over his handlebars and smacked his head on the curb with no helmet. He was in the hospital a total of 80 days and six weeks in a coma. Medical bills totaled $1 million. My friend was hanging out with his friends on a skateboard near a picnic area in our apartment complex. The skateboard went out from under him and without a helmet on, he hit his head on a concrete picnic table. He was discharged from the hospital and told he would be fine and to enjoy his life. Twelve hours later, he started dying and by noon on the 27th, he was brain dead. My 16 and a half year old nephew passed away on June 23, 2006. In late morning hours of June 22, my sister received a call that her son was taken by a helicopter to the hospital. He had a serious head injury due to hitting his head on the sidewalk. He was on his skateboard and did not have a helmet on. 24 hours later, he was pronounced brain dead. He never woke in the hospital. My mom recently passed away due to a head injury from a horse accident. I will never know what happened out there, and I will never know if a helmet could have saved her life, but maybe she would have had a chance. These stories you have just heard are from a website for the Bicycle Helmet Safety Institute called Crashes the Other Side. Family and friends of accident victims have written to this website to tell their story. They have all come together to accomplish one goal, to save lives by encouraging helmet use. Helmets are extremely important. In 2005, 784 bicyclists died on U.S. roads. It is estimated that between 75 to 85 percent of these fatalities could have been prevented if the rider had been wearing a helmet. More than 40 percent of bicycle-related deaths due to head injuries occur in children ages 14 and under. But bicycle riding is not the only activity where a helmet is needed. Skateboarders, roller skaters, skiers, Motorcyclists, ATV riders, and even horseback riders should wear helmets. Most skate parks have rules for wearing protective gear, while Florida laws state that bicycle riders under 16 and motorcyclists under age 21 must wear a helmet. I choose to wear a helmet because I don't want to die. Um, if I fall off without and hit my head without a helmet, it could be uh, pretty bad for me. So I'd be, rather be safe than sorry. We have a lot of head traumas due to people not wearing helmets on motorcycles, kids not wearing bicycle helmets. You get some, some traumas from kids not on skateboards that fall off skateboards. Even with laws and rules, there are still those who for various reasons choose not to wear a helmet. No, I do not wear helmets because it's too hot. I don't wear a helmet because it messes my ears and I'm skating. I'll try to skate and then I feel like there's a bee on my ear because of the chin strap. And that's why I don't wear a helmet. I don't wear a helmet because it aggravates my head. I don't wear a helmet because it costs way too much, and if you want to skate for companies, they don't like it when you wear helmets. Professional skateboarder Judd Held has worn helmets in the past, but doesn't wear one all the time. Basically, as far as like being a pro skateboarder and wearing helmets, um, I guess it's just the essence of like, you know, you kind of master that. And for the most part, like I've only, I think I've been knocked out twice in my life. Both times I had a helmet on. Um, usually when I fall, it's, you know, I know how to roll and stuff like that. And just being a pro skateboarder, you just kind of learn how to not fall that way, you know. And I'm not a big, like, handrail skater where I fall down in that issue. And pretty much if, if it's not required by law, I'm not going to wear one because, you know, I get too hot or whatever. Like Gibson Sr. Jeff Early wasn't wearing a helmet when skateboarding with some friends over the summer. That decision almost cost him his life. First thing that the cement was the back of my head and then the front of my head. 
that's basically all I can remember. After that, I woke up three or four days later in the hospital. At that point, I was hysterical. I mean, like any parent would be, I, I was hysterical. I thought, this is it. I'm going to lose my son. He's not going to make it through the night. It was completely not what we expected. I woke up in the hospital. I was in a bed. I, I knew I was there from the accident, but that was about it. Uh, I didn't know where I was entirely. I just looked for my family, basically. I wanted to know where they were and if they were okay, too, or if, if they were okay with what happened to me. Lakeland Regional Trauma Surgeon Dr. Sion sees firsthand the effects of not wearing a helmet. The main things are you can see skull fractures where you actually get, um, get uh, breaks actually in the bone surrounding the brain. You can get bleeding in the brain and around the brain. Um, those are referred to as subarachnoid, subdural, and epidural hematomas. The other thing is that there are people who do survive um, who have significant head injuries um, from not wearing a helmet. And with that, you can actually have significant long-term disabilities associated with that. In 2004, Safe Kids USA completed a study on helmet usage. They found that only 41% of children ages 5 to 14 at studied sites were wearing helmets. At the sites where helmets were required, only 52% were wearing them. More than a third of the kids who were wearing helmets were wearing them incorrectly. The fit and positioning of the helmet are essential to help reduce injury. First of all, there are different types of helmets for different sports, so make sure to purchase the correct one for the sport you want to do. The helmet must be snug, level, and stable. It should resist hard blows and stay in place. Your chin strap should be snug against your chin and it should stay fastened. You should replace your helmet if you crash it, drop it, or if it no longer fits correctly. As the Polk County Medical Association, we're going to continue to um, uh, fight for the, um, the reinstatement of the Florida helmet uh, law because of the significant benefits that we feel can be obtained from wearing helmets. Wearing a helmet saves lives, and that's been proven factor. You don't think it's going to happen to you, and when it does, it's unexpected. So it's better to be safe. Just wear a helmet. It's, it's not that bad. Studies have shown that over the years, helmet usage has increased in all ages. As more children and adults choose to wear helmets, the number of head injuries will decrease. That is a trend we want to continue. Make the right choice. Protect yourself by wearing a helmet. Ashley Powell, TSC News.